Hey guys, welcome back to this five part series where we're going to be making a logo in Figma. Then we're going to be jumping into Spline to create some beautiful 3D goodness. Then we're going to be animating that using the fantastic Spline tool itself. Then we're going to be talking about how we can use Spline to export this as PNGs, videos, and also embed it in a web project. And then the fifth video is going to be actually putting this in a web project that is responsive and works on different breakpoints. So let's get into it. So we've now created this logo. If you want to know how, to, how we created this logo, go back to video one. So we've got an ellipse, and we've got a star, and we've excluded that. Now what we can do is we can ex export this as an SVG. So this would be the whole shape that we've got here. But if you're a keen-eyed fox, you may have noticed that what I did in this video is this shape is spinning as well as the internal shape. So we've got the icon spinning round on the y-axis, but we've also got this internal shape spinning too. Now, if we want to do something a little bit more complicated in the animation, then what we'll need to do is to think about that from the export. We'll actually need to export this as two separate files. One will be the circle, and then one will be the star shape that we've got in the middle. If you just want one single shape, though, you can export this together as a group. So you see we've got exclude, and we can just export exclude. But I'm going to export these two individual files together, okay? So I'm going to take them out of this group and I'm going to call this star demo and then I'm going to call this one uh, circle demo, okay? So we've essentially got two different shapes in here now. <coughs> circle, star, simple enough. Okay, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click export SVG, okay? Boom. Same again over here. Export SVG. Now it has to be an SVG, okay? The reason for that is because what we're going to do in Spline is to turn this from a 2D into a 3D. We're going to use extrusion, which means that we can create something that's flat into something which has some kind of depth to it. And you can't do that with a PNG um, or a JPEG. Now, if you, you know, whatever tool you're using, just look up how to export it as an SVG. You should be able to do that, um, whether that's Figma, Adobe Illustrator, um, whatever tool, okay? So now we're gonna create a new file in Spline tool. Now, if you haven't used Spline before, it's basically a 3D browser-based tool, uh, which is great for the web. So if you've used something like Blender or Cinema 4D, these are pretty heavy duty tools, which are amazing. And you can do all the stuff I'm about to show you here on those tools, but it's just Spline is a really handy little tool to actually create stuff uh, for the web specifically. You can also invite people to use the file. There's all sorts of amazing community assets which you can duplicate for free, which is insane. And there's incredible people like Axie Morris on here um, who are doing all sorts of cool stuff. So anyway, recommend Spline. It's really cool. <coughs> really, really cool tool. Okay, I'm going to click New File. Now inside here, I've got uh, a rectangle and I've got directional light. We don't really need any of those. I'm going to hide the directional light, de delete the rectangle. Now, in the bottom left here, we've got import SVG. And we've got our ellipse and we've got our uh, star. I'm actually just going to turn this to uh, that star demo. There it is. And then we've got our circle uh, which final circle SVG I swear I called it circle hold on I called it export circle demo there it is didn't export it sorry my bad okay import SVG circle demo 
Boom. Okay, these are the same size. That's great. Now, you're like, whoa, this is ugly as hell, Jack. I don't like this at all. I get it. We're going to change it. So as you can see, these are flat. Flat as pancakes, guys. Useless. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a nice shiny effect after giving it some kind of extrusion. First of all, let's give it some extrusion. So what I'm going to do is on the shape, um, so as you can see, we've got circle demo, star demo, and then the shape path in here. So I'm actually going to take this out of the group first. Get out of there. Okay, nice. So I'm going to get rid of that, get rid of that, star, boom, circle, boom. Okay, so uh, inside here, I'm going to give it an extrusion of 200. So now we've got something a bit deeper. You can't really see because I've given it no textures yet, but just trust me, that is deeper. And now we've got this one. I'm going to make this one 300, and I'll explain why in just a second. Um, in terms of layers, what we can do is we can actually give this uh, some kind of material layers. Now, to do that, we can click this plus icon, and then we can go down to Matcap. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that Matcap is my favorite layer because you can do so much with so little. So I'm going to give it a nice shine. Ooh, it's kind of looking sexy already. And now you can start to see the corners of this. Now, as you can see, we've got some pretty hard corners. All right. What if we wanted to give it some kind of soft edges? We can do that here in bevel. So let's say we make this 15 and then we're going to bevel the sides a bit. Now already we've got something so much more interesting than that flat 2D object. You see how we've got these soft corners and that beveled side. Nice. Okay, cool. So that's black though. We want it to be red or we want some kind of red effect going on. I, I'm not set on this being like the final logo. It was more just like, eh, it's kind of cool, like it's red. Um, now, as you guys may know, you can use different layers on your matte cap. So we've currently got this black one, uh, which comes with spline. These are free with spline. What we can do, though, is we can actually upload an image. And I've got this thing called the Cosmo Labs Mega Bundle, which is pretty fun. And in experimental, let me change this to icons. In experimental, um, I came across this one, which I just thought was so cool. Okay, so it's this mad kind of geometric shape. He has all sorts of amazing, um, yeah, amazing different options, as you can see, but I'm just gonna go for this one for now, which is number 54 if you've got the pack. Boom. Okay, so suddenly we've got a really mad effect going on. You see this? Like, just out of nowhere, we've got such an interesting effect. If you look at the edges, whoa, mama. Okay, so we've got this. Now we've got this star, and the star's like, hey, I'm not, I'm not cool. Make me look cool. Okay, so let's get this. And you can see that the star is extruded 300. This is extruded 200. The reason why I've done that is because when I cut out the middle of this circle using this star, I'm going to use this thing called a Boolean, which means that it's basically um, extracting the middle of this star of the circle with the star shape. I'll show you now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both of these. You can see them both highlighted on the right. And then you've got this alignment on the on the right. So you see how this um, nav on the right changes depending on what you click on. Okay, so if you don't see that, what you need to do is highlight both of them. Boom. And then I'm going to go to align to, and I'm going to go center, Y, center, Z, center. Now if we change this, if we click on this little red bot uh, button here, we'll see that the star is 300 width, or 300 extruded, I should say, which means that compared to the circle, which is only 200, we've got something that is going through the middle and then out the other side on both sides. You see that? Cool. 
and then what I'm going to do is this little button in the top middle. <coughs> so this is while it's still highlighted, okay? It needs to be highlighted for this to work. Oh, okay. Really useful mistake that I just made there. So why is that fucked up? Or why is that messed up? Sorry, I'm trying to swear less. The reason is because we've got the circle on the top of this and the star on the bottom. If we change the star to this top layer, you'll see that that has now changed. That's now working because this works in layers a little bit like Figma or Photoshop or anything else you might have used. But now we've got the star color and we've lost that amazing tint that we had going on. So let's change that back. So if we actually highlight the Boolean itself, let's call this logo. And now let's get the logo itself with that highlight. So we're going to go back to Matcap. We're going to go to Upload Image. We're going to go back to number 54. And Bazinga, we've got something that looks muy sexy. Look at that. Look at that. How cool does that look? Oh, man, I couldn't have made that. Like, it, that is so simple to do when it looks so complex in my head. I'm like, that's so sick. Okay, cool. So we've got that now. Now let's say we wanted to bring in the text too. What I'm gonna do <coughs> is I'm gonna click on the background and I'm gonna just change this to some a lighter color just so we can see everything a bit better. Now what I wanna do is to have the text on the right here. Do you remember this that I made earlier? New sync and the text comes up that's what I'm trying to achieve over here, okay? So now we've got this, but we now need the text to come in. So we can go back to this, and we can actually export this as an SVG. Now, you can actually upload text files to Spline. Um, if you wanted to do that, you could uh, simply go to uh, text, let's say we Put in some text here so uh, upload fonts um, you can see how this is kind of tiny right now but if we highlight this uh, we can make the font size way bigger uh, we can actually change the fonts so we've got roboto here or roboto depending on where you're from um, and there's loads and loads of different fonts there some are insanely ugly like salsa um, but if we wanted to actually upload our own font, we can do that by clicking this little cloud icon and uh, we should be able to see our, our font. Mm, maybe not. Why can't I find my font? Maybe it's because I didn't put it on my desktop. Whatever. Basically, you can upload fonts yourself here. Alternative option is actually just to export it from Figma as a vector and then whack that into your file. And there it is. So we've already got something that looks pretty pretty cool here. We've got, um, this is a 2D um, text, so it's flat right now. What we can do is we can actually make this 3D once more. So how do we do that? Well if we enable the letters just so we know what we're working with s y n c whoop c and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to get all these and i'm going to extrude them let's make them 200 uh, and that's going to be quite nice because that's the same width as our logo to make sure that that's the same, whoop, the same, yeah, perfect, nice. You see how useful the alignment tool is, guys. Highlight whatever, bang, you can do things really quickly and easily, really nice. <coughs> so let's say we're like, oh, you know what? We want this to be exactly the same color as this. What we can do is we've got this uh, matte cap here, We've got the lighting, 
Uh, we can add other things as well if you want to play. You know, you can add depth, gradient, noise. Noise is really fun, actually. Um, if you change this to Ashima, and let's give it five, five, and five. And then what we can do is actually change that to overlay. You see, we've now got this kind of textured effect, which I just think is beautiful. But what I'm trying to do is just illustrate how quickly you can change things and play with stuff. Like play, make sure that you explore different options because it might not be the perfect option first time. In fact, I bet you it's not. Um, so yeah, you know, have a little play. Maybe you're like, you know what? Let's try out a Fresnel layer. Um, if you you see how subtle that changes things, but how nice that that is. Important to note though, um, as much as it's like, yeah, let's play with stuff, you know, make it perfect. If you are going to embed this on a website, every time you add a new material, it's going to slow down load speed slightly. All right, you're going to actually notice when you go to export this performance in the bottom left. You've got your scene is optimized now. If you click Run Test, you'll see you've got this is 100 sorry 849 kilobytes right now, and it's a really really good loading speed time. But I know for a fact that the more assets you add, the more this is gonna get worse. Uh, so the more complex your scene, essentially the more spline is like, well, this is going to take a while to load, big man. And that's going to affect your user experience. So just be aware, as much as I'm like, yeah, play, explore, have fun, I'm also like, whoa, careful, because, you know, it's going to affect uh, the website uh, if you are going to use this on a website. If you're not, if you're going to export it as a video or whatever, hey, go to town, go play. Okay, cool. So we've now got this, we've got this... Uh, perfect let's say we're like yeah we're happy now we can click the four buttons here we click the plus icon and you'll see we've now created uh, a library so I'm gonna call this uh, red texture and what that means is we can apply that same texture to this text we can now click red texture and boom we've got a sexy logo that you know has all the same styling I actually might make this a bit bigger just to fit with that word mark yeah I kind of like that just aligned let's just make sure we nail that alignment whoop I always do that on the x-axis okay yeah, I think that's nice. I think with the Y, it's kind of messing up. But yeah, there it is, guys. We've just made a logo using Spline. So we've imported the assets from Figma as SVGs. Now we've played around with them. We've made them look sexy in Spline. And now the next step is animating them. See you in the next video to get that cooking.